Good morning, students. Today I will start with the next chapter that is constitutional design. So we noted in the previous chapter that in a democracy the rulers are not free to do what they like because they are accountable and answerable to the people. There are certain basic rules that the citizens and the government have to follow, and all such rules together are called constitution. So in this chapter we ask some basic questions about the constitutional design of a democracy. that is why do we need a constitution and if we need it who is the person or who are the persons authorized to write that constitution what values do they keep in mind what is what is their vision what is their mission while they are writing or framing this constitution that has to be very transcendent transcendental in nature i mean it has to live for the coming generations and once a constitution is made are we or the people of the next generation authorized to make any changes in it so we will start this chapter with a case study of a country south africa which initially uh, envisioned a very unique system of racial discrimination that was that is why it is called as racial discrimination because it was a discrimination based on the color of skin which we called as race so you would have uh, heard a word called as racism that racism is when the discrimination is practiced based on the color of skin that is discrimination between white and black so we'll start with the chapter democratic constitution in south africa i have fought against white domination so this is nelson mandela the first black president of south africa and a very renowned leader I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve, but if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. The speech is being given by Nelson Mandela being tried for treason. Treason ka matlab hota hai desh droh. by the white south african government so south africa was ruled by whites and it was infested by people who were black so the rule of whites over black and it was very very discriminatory in nature he and seven other leaders were sentenced to life imprisonment in 1964 for daring to oppose the apartheid regime apartheid was a very unique system of discrimination based on the color of skin He spent the next 28 years in South Africa's most dreaded or fearful prison, Robben Island. Struggle against apartheid. So apartheid was the name of a racial discrimination, a discrimination based on the color of skin, which was unique to South Africa. The white Europeans imposed this system on South Africa during the 17th and 18th centuries. The trading companies from Europe, the people who came to trade, that is to buy and sell. occupied it with arms and force as it happened with our country the britishers they came as traders and they established their empire over here in the way they occupied india but unlike india a large number of white sat settled in south africa and became the local rulers the system of apartheid divided the people and labeled them on the basis of their skin color so now the people who were either black or colored that is maybe they were not exactly black but especially the people of mixed races or the people who migrated from india south africans are actually a bit dark i will not refer them as black that seems to be very derogatory and anyways this system does not exist now so the people who came from europe they were considered white and the people who came from india and the people who stayed there they were considered black and colored The white rulers treated all non-whites as inferiors. The non-whites did not even have voting rights. That is one of the basic fundamental right of a country, if not fundamental, at least legal right. The apartheid system was particularly oppressive for the blacks. They were forbidden from living in white areas. Acute untouchability was practiced. In our country, Article 17 prohibits untouchability because we have a constitution. they were forbidden from living in white areas they could work in white areas only if they had a permit they are the domicile they are the residents of the country but they were discriminated just because they were black trains buses taxis hotels hospitals schools and colleges libraries cinema halls theaters beaches swimming pools public toilets 
were all separate for the whites and blacks as it was way way back in our country untouchability as its extreme you must have read it in the history that our country since its inception was divided in four varnas brahmin kshatriya vaishyas and shudras so brahmin and kshatriyas were the whites actually and vaishyas and shudras were the blacks so they had very different areas to live in vaishyas and shudras were not allowed to mingle with these people they had different schools and Dif- uh, the public places were not accessed by the blacks at all why because the whites did not allow somewhat very same but brahmin kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras were all from the same country they were the intruders whites were the intruders and they had established their rule this was called segregation they could not even visit the churches where the whites worshiped even right to worship was taken away from them blacks could not form associations or protest against the terrible treatment blacks did not even have the right to protest against this so you have to bear you have to just tolerate what is going on with you you don't have any right in fact no freedom of speech and expression that is guaranteed article 19 1a of indian constitution guarantees us that we cannot be suppressed since 1950 the blacks colored and indians fought against the apartheid system they launched protest marches and strikes the african national congress was the umbrella organization that is a big organization under which number of small organization they work or operate that led the struggle against the policies of segregation this included many workers unions and the communist party many sensitive whites also joined the anc to oppose apartheid and played a leading role in this struggle so there were certain people in whites as well who were sensitive they understood that what the whites are doing is gross that is wrong that is not acceptable so even they joined this protest several countries denounced apartheid as unjust and racist a very unequal way of treating people but the white racist government continued to rule by detaining torturing and killing thousands of black and colored people as protest and struggle against apartheid and increased the government realized that they could no longer keep the blacks under their rule through repression as it happened in india a time came when the indians were now net ready to be suppressed So the white regime changed its policies discriminatory laws were taken back ban on political parties and every other thing media and every uh, the ban on uh, on every kind of organization was lifted after 28 years of imprisonment nelson mandela walked out as a free man and finally at the midnight of 26th april 1994 the national flag of the republic of south africa was unfurled was hoisted marking the newly born democracy in the world and the apartheid government came to an end paving way for the formation of a multiracial government a government which will have representative from all section that is black white and colored now that is called as equal representation how did this come about historical enemies succeeded in negotiating a peaceful transition from apartheid to democracy so a transformation from a very repressive regime to a very democratic regime my wish is that south africans never give up on the belief in goodness so he said that i am appealing to the black people to forgive the whites and not do the same to them but we believe in the same right jaise ko taisa he is a very uh, kind of a person who is still remembered for his human nature so he's for asking the blacks he pleaded blacks don't don't try to take any kind of revenge forget everything forget and forgive let us build a new south africa wherein we will even give representation to this white so let us all sit together white black and colored and let us frame constitution because if there are written laws you are guaranteed certain rights that is the case in india we have written laws that's why we have guaranteed fundamental rights the most crucial word here is guaranteed and after 2 years of discussion as it happened in india 2 years 11 months and 18 days after 2 years of discussion they framed a very fine constitution for india and that is how the law of the land was developed so we'll continue with the same in the next lecture